Hey guys, what's up? Brent Kalman from Blue Water VST. This is our spooky Halloween video. And uh, for those of you who are watching from outside the U.S. and don't have the blessing of having the Halloween holiday, it's an excuse for us to dress up and go and uh, demand candy from complete strangers. It's also a lot of fun. But it's also typically a time when we uh, evoke images of ghosts and skeletons and all sorts of spooky stuff. And I thought in, in this case, uh, calling attention to one of the spookiest ensembles in the reactor user library would be a good thing to do and also this is an ensemble that really deserves a lot more attention than it has gotten recently this one is called ice pad it's by rick scott and it generates these spooky atmospheric textures uh, kind of glacial in uh, in tone if, if you will you can get this of course for free by visiting the reactor user library and you need to when you visit the library you need to log in with your credentials that you use for the Native Instruments Service Center. So make sure you have those on hand. Uh, just Google Reactor User Library and then in the search box when you've logged in, search for IcePad. And it's this one, IcePad uh, 1.1. It's by Rick Scott. As I said, and you can download it here just by using this download button and vote for it as well. And then once you get it on your system, uh, you'll have all sorts of stuff to play with. Now we'll take a look at a couple different applications that you could use this for. Uh, but if you have further confusion with getting this to work, there's a video that I've done called, I think it's something like <clears throat> using the reactor user library, and that should get you going. So now let's take a look at some applications. So now let's take a look at using IcePad inside a machine project. Now I've loaded up machine, and I've loaded this dubstep kit from the library, and when I did that, I checked this box so that the patterns would load with it. And then in group B, I loaded IcePad, or I loaded reactor, I should say, onto sound one, and I have located IcePad inside Reactor. And of course, to bring up the interface, you just need to click this edit box. When you have a plugin in one of the sounds, this edit box will appear and that will let, allow you to, to access the interface. So IcePad, I have, I have placed inside my user ensembles folder, and this is a good practice. Uh, just as the factory content is located inside its own kind of folder hierarchy, you wanna make sure that your Reactor user library stuff is located inside your user ensemble factory or, or file structure. So just find that on your system and then make sure you're downloading everything to that to that folder. It saves you a lot of time trying to locate this stuff. So I've opened up IcePad. I've selected a snapshot called BellPad. And now we're going to hear this in conjunction with the pattern being played by the dubstep kit. Here we go. So there you have it. It's a very complex kind of haunting bell texture. And this is one of many uh, diverse snapshots in this snapshot bank. Rick Scott, who designed this, also produced some very kind of wild and usable musical snapshots. And they're all different. That's what's great about this. Also, you'll notice that the interface is very minimal. It has only what you need and nothing that you don't, and that's about the most that can be said of an interface. But there are, there are a lot of possibilities for changing the sound. I'll leave those to you. Uh, but, but do note that with some of these, you actually have to switch them on, in, in the case of the ring modulator, uh, the resonator, and the saturator. And there's another one up here. I'm not quite sure what this does. We can go to our info hints and see if it's in there. Oh, it widens the spread. Okay, so as you can also see that the info hints are there helpful as well. So having taken a look at this, now let's switch over to a different application for IcePad, and this will be a kind of side chain glacial pad and more of a techno kind of context. We'll take a look at that next. Now let's take a look at using IcePad in more of a techno context. What I've done is created a live set here. I've loaded machine onto one track and I've sent the kick drum to a separate track of its own so that it can serve as a trigger for the side chain compression that is going to be applied to IcePad. So that's a fancy way of saying there'll be this kind of cool rhythmic ducking effect every time the kick drum comes in. It'll create this kind of rhythmic pulsing. And in live, the way to do this, of course, is to select side chain on your compressor, activate this, and then in audio from, select the track that has the kick drum on it. And it should just be the kick drum because you don't want anything else uh, confusing the compressor. You just want it to activate or deactivate, I should say, when that kick drum hits. So here's how this would sound. I'm going to make sure I unsolo ice pad before we start here. Here we go. Now 
what's cool about this is that IcePad is kind of continually evolving uh, behind the scenes. It, that sidechain compression is always there, but there are different kind of textures coming out of the sound the longer that you hear it. It's, it's kind of an evolving and complex sound, which makes it interesting to the ear. And if we solo this, we can hear what it's doing in isolation with the compression still. Also, I've activated this auto filter uh, with a bandpass just to, to kind of zero in on that frequency that I want, but there's no reason you have to do that. Gives you a little flexibility if you want to do it, though. And of course, as I said before, this is one of many snapshots that you can use for this purpose. It's great to just get in there and try out different, different sounds based on, on the project that you're working with. So I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been IcePad, and I, and I really encourage you to go and go to the Reactor user library and uh, leave a comment for Rick Scott. This, this kind of stuff really deserves to be recognized and praised. I think it's a tremendous gift to have these people out here devoting their time and their talents to, to creating uh, ensembles for us to use for free. So go to the, go to the user library, vote for it, uh, leave a comment saying how much you like it, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Happy Halloween. Talk to you again soon.